this video we're going to discuss safe overclocking voltages for AMD Ryzen 3900X. Overclocking, is it faster single core versus multi core? Is it worth it? Under volting while overclocked versus auto overclock voltage. And the conclusion, does it feel better? Does it feel faster? Now what are the numbers for default, automatic overclock and manual overclock? I'm going to put them on the screen for you over here so we could compare. And here we go. We have default numbers, which was maximum boosting to 4046 uh, with a single score of 528 and a multi score of 8094. We have the automatic overclock, which was boosting to single core 523 with the multi core score of 8147. And then we have the overclock version, which was boosting on single core 530 with a maximum of all cores 8582 as far as the score goes. So in single core, auto overclock works better because of the auto boost that these Ryzen processors have. I've seen my processor going up to 4600, but then it gains very, very little in single core processing and it doesn't stay over there for very long. So when you run the bench CPU, you will see the temperatures go to about 80 degrees. It's scoring 852 because I have a recording software running in the background and in single core stays at 527. And what's also very, very important, when I stress the CPU, you'll see that the voltage that is running at is 1.398, 1.395, so it stays around 1.4 volt on all cores and with a frequency of 4059. Now, why is this important? Because we're gonna go to overclocking and you will see how big of a difference it makes. And that brings me to the second point of this video. Is it faster when you let it boost to up to 4750 based on what they are claiming? Well, no. Score-wise, even though theoretically under that should be able to score a little bit more, it stays very, very briefly at that frequency. So most of the time you see it around 4.3 gigahertz. Because of that, it's basically matching overclocked at 4300 all the time, and that's guaranteed. So that's why overclocking is a lot faster, because even in single core, basically they hit the same frequency. But in multi-core, you have a guaranteed 4300 versus a 40, 46, 40, 58, that this one is basically able to do automatically overclocked. Also, voltages. Voltages are very, very important. As you noticed in the previous test that I was doing, and I'm gonna start it again, you'll see that the voltages st stabilize around 1.4 volts. And this is how much the processor in the motherboard pushes into the processor for maintaining the 4,065 megahertz with a temperature of 79, almost 80 degrees. It's doing 1.39 volts. And that's the thing, is that I was able to run it at 4.3 on all cores with less voltage. That means that that will actually extend the life of the processor, as long as the temperatures are in control. And I'm running a air cooler. So let's switch to manual and see what's gonna happen. We're gonna do a quick restart and come back. We are back, we're gonna click on manual. I have the settings already put into the system, apply. Apply with success. As you can see, it locked the voltage to 1.356 with 4300 maximum on all cores. If I stress the CPU right now, let's see where the temperatures will go. So as you can see, the temperatures are actually lower than they were before. Uh, it's reaching 79, but it's gonna just stop over there. So this is already a progress. Before we're running 79 towards, towards 80. So we already dropped one degree and it's stable at 1.356. If I'm gonna bench the CPU, and I could do that with no problem, it will maybe score a little bit less than here because I have a recording program running in the background. But that's the beauty of a multi-core, is that it is capable to record the screen and do all these things without actually any hesitation. And there we go, we have exactly almost the same results as we had before. So this proves that uh, a stable processor at 1.356, this is the voltage, 1.3565, on all cores 4300, it's actually faster than letting it automatically overclock. So what we have is 532 versus 530 in single core, which is minimal difference. Yes, it can boost up to 4.4, 4.5 sometimes, but very rarely and stays over there very briefly. But on the multi-core, we're gaining a lot as far as the speed goes, and we're running the CPU a little bit cooler like about a one degree cooler. So basically what we're doing is we're overclocking while under volting and that works great. So what is the conclusion? On the long run, theoretically the processor should last longer because instead of being automatically overclocked, manually overclocked, we are actually using less voltage into the processor and less temperature. 
These are the biggest killers for a CPU. And I'm running on just a basic air coolers. I'm not running anything fancy as far as the cooling solution goes. But how does it feel? Does it feel better? How it feels, it's not something that you could really, really measure. So I feel it's running better. So I keep it overclocked mostly because it's running cooler, because it's run using less voltage, theoretically less wattage. It stays cooler. That's also very, very important. And it feels snappier. I know that when I'm clicking here, if I'm using just one core, I'm guaranteed to get 4300 megahertz. And if I'm rendering something, I'm guaranteed to go and get 4300 megahertz on all cores. So if you're wondering what is better for you, if your processor can handle it and you don't have to push the voltages more than it's in overclocked mode, automatically overclocked mode, then go for it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you appreciated this video. Let me know what you think at the bottom. Vegas Romaniac, out. A couple of things to clarify before we get into it. I was able to find a 3900X, Ryzen 3900X, that can be overclocked to 4.3 at 1.35625 volts. And it's stable at that, four hours running Cinebench.